Um, I may have to go back to home. My little video square is over the next button, but you see, I can go back to the home page. So we did the warm up, and then the next thing is the main part of the lesson is here the reading, the video, and the questions. So, um, I, here's a copy of the text from week one. So you have a copy of the text here, but what you're going to do next is you're going to watch a short film. You're watching a short film here. It's 16 minutes long. It is the science fiction story, Harrison Burger on by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, you will use the note taking sheet to capture information about the characters and theme or message the author of the story wants to convey. So theme or message. So it, what is the message or the lesson the author was trying to tell us? So while you're watching this movie, or you can watch it and go back, there is a, um, you can't see it on yours. I'm going to have to go back to uh, mine. The, um, the uh, capture sheet has, um, let me see if I can do it here. I keep having this problem where I don't know how to get out of this. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, so I have to go back to teacher view. I can't be in student view, so I can show you the capture sheet. Um, when, when on your screen, you'll be able to see on your screen, you'll be able to see this capture sheet that I'm going to show you here. Okay. So what it is, it's a little table um, with the three characters or with four characters from the film. You are going to take notes about each character. I completed one for you as a model. So here are the questions across the top from left to right. The character's name. What do we know about the character's qualities? What handicaps is the character forced to wear in this futuristic society? And does the character accept, like agree, or resist and fight society's requirement of making all citizens equal by requiring handicaps. So who are the characters from that we're talking about? Hazel, George, Harrison, and the ballerina who dances with Harrison. So I did Hazel for you, so you could see what I mean. What do we know about Hazel's characters? The text tells us she's of average intelligence. What handicaps is she forced to wear? None. If you'll remember, in the other characters, or some of the other characters in this society, um, they want everyone to be equal. So no one can be smarter, better looking, or stronger than anyone else. People who are good looking have to wear a mask. People who are really smart have to have a radio in their ear that makes loud noises. And people who are like strong and physically capable have to wear weights to make them like heavy. She, Hazel didn't have any of those things. So she wasn't extremely beautiful, she wasn't extremely intelligent, or she wasn't extremely strong. Okay. How did Hazel feel about society's requirement of making them wear the handicaps? Um, they talk, she and George talk about it, and she accepts society's requirement. She thinks society would fall apart, is what she said, if people weren't equal. There's one point in the story where she wants George to take off his weights because she feels bad because it's so heavy. But when he says no, she's like, okay. So you're going to do the same thing for George. You're going to, after you watch the film and you can read the text again, you're going to go through and answer these questions up here about George, about Harrison, and about the ballerina. Not all the ballerinas, but the one ballerina who danced with Harrison. Okay. The next thing you have here is... You'll see here, this is a copy of the text that was given to you in week one. The, in green here, it says, read the story again, and you can use it when you answer the quiz question. So you are going to take a quiz about um, this story, and um, I just wanted to give you another copy of it so that you would have it. Okay. Before you take the quiz, though, before you take the quiz, you have a class discussion. In normal school, if we were going to read a text, we would take notes and we would talk about it in class. You guys would answer questions and I would say, okay, now turn to your table and talk about it with the people at your table. And then I might call on you and call on other tables. And then you got to hear a lot of different opinions and points of view. Since we can't do that in online school, this is how we're going to do it. So when it says class discussion, 
That means you give your opinion, but you also have to talk to somebody else in the class. So the way this works is there's a question here. You type your answer in this box. After you post it, you can see what everybody else wrote. And if, let's say in our class, if Kiersey writes something and she presses post, she can see what Edith wrote. And Edith can see what Johanna wrote, and Johanna can see what Desaev wrote, and Desaev can see what Hazel wrote, and Sandra can see what Danny wrote. We can all see what each other wrote. And you can respond to each other. So after Kiersey posts, she might look at Edith's post and say, oh, I agree with Edith, but I, I have some more information. And she could say, Edith, I agree with what you said, but I would add this. Or she could say, I like what you said, but I have a different opinion and say what she has to say. The main point is to be respectful. So what are you discussing? If you go up here, here are the directions. We're thinking about the big question. Is fairness more important than freedom? And last week, those of you who participated in online school had some really good ideas about that. Many of you had one opinion before you read the short story. All of you had one opinion before you read the short story, Harris Bergeron, and then afterwards you changed your opinion. So you're thinking about Harris Ber Harrison Bergeron, the science fiction story, where everyone in this future society is everyone's been made equal. So now your question you answer is, in your opinion, is it fair that some people in the story have more handicaps than others? Why or why not? How do the handicaps enforce sameness rather than equality? So how is it really that it's making people just the same and not equal? How do you, and the final question is, how do you think people in our society in 2020 would respond if they had these enforced handicaps like in this story? So answer those questions. And the main point of this is to try to generate discussion. So I want you to write your answer. If you're the first person to post and you don't see anybody else's response, you're going to have to come back and post an answer. Okay. The next thing we're going to, you're going to do is I'm going to go back to the homepage and let me click on student view. It's working here. My computer's loading. Okay. Um, the, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take a quiz. It's part multiple choice, part, part multiple choice and part short answer. I want you to notice this here. You can use your notes and the text of the story when you do the quiz. So you can have the text open in a different window or tab and any notes you did, you can use to help you on the quiz. Okay. I have to close myself out here again. Okay. Um, Leave student view. Okay, I'm still here. I apologize. I'm taking too long here. Okay. So then um, the last thing you have to do after you take your quiz is an end of the week speaking reflection. So you get to the speaking reflection and you, many of you did this last week. You did a great job. You are going to read this um, question here and record your answer. In your opinion, is it fair that some people in the story have more handicaps than others? Why or why not? How do the handicaps enforce? So it's basically the same thing we did in your class discussion. And you are now going to speak after you've had an opportunity to hear um, all your classmates' responses, you can um, respond, if, add it to your speaking, and you'll, you'll be practiced by then after you've gotten a chance to see everyone else's ideas to come up with your best answer. Okay, um, then the last thing is not any work, but a wrap-up and looking ahead. So this slide is the very last thing, and it kind of goes through did you do all the things you needed to do? And so it was a, a little checklist and letting you know what we're going to be doing in the week ahead. Next week, we're going to be further exploring the idea, idea, of, the idea of fairness and freedom by reading and analyzing an article called Proposed Treatment to Fix Genetic Diseases Raises Ethical Issues. So sounds pretty exciting. Okay, so that is it for the week.
And um, don't forget that we have our Zoom class um, on, on Tuesday. Whoops. This is week one. We have our Zoom class on Tuesday at 1245. I hope to see you there. Um, my final words are please, please, please do all your work and participate in online school. Marking period four is different. We don't get letter grades, no A, B, C, D, or E. It's simply pass or don't pass. So everyone can pass um, if they participate every week in online school and turn in their assignments. It's really important you do it for all your classes, ESOL and every other class. If you have questions, please email me, um, text me through the, through the Remind app or the number I gave you in the slides from Marking Period 3, and I know everybody knows how to get a hold of me, or come to the Zoom on Tuesday. Uh, that's it. Have a great week, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.